that's and and police have believe you know they're like the rest of us they just don't like change we've been doing it this way the bad police don't like it because it show up their bad tactics mm -hmm. but but even you know most ordinary police just don't don't like the, the idea of changing and they're afraid that a camera like that going on would, would kind of chill the interview but I know, just as a reporter myself, it doesn't. And and what they have found in these states where it's happened is it's the best thing for prosecutors, it's the best thing for police, everybody likes it. Because the prosecutors get to have, you know, if they don't just play the tape, they show the video of, of Jesse Miss Kelly saying these things, and they show, it, 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 they get to see his, the jury gets to see his face as he confessed, and whatever else they want to, show. Everybody likes it where it's where it's been employed. Um, it has not been, there's been no effort to, to do that here, but I think I'm going to be involved in that as soon as as soon as this gets done. You mentioned during your presentation, Laura, that in this, you had felt compelled to step out of your role somewhat as a reporter because of what you know about this case. And I think you given credit for changing political history due to your recent article on Judge Fogelman. And so I would, I would, my question to you is, I'm just intrigued as to whether or not you've had any reaction from the politicos, if you will, about what you were able to accomplish with your story. Uh, well, thank you, Jerry. I, um, I have mixed feelings about all that because I wasn't that crazy about his opponent, <laughs> but but uh, I, I, the stronger feelings were that this man should not be on the Supreme Court, and and that's what he was recently writing for, you know. But uh, the the most interesting reaction I got, and there really has not been a, a, a lot of people saying, "Oh wow, I, we didn't know that the sentiment was so strong about this case out there." I, I haven't heard any of that. But, but I did get a call before the election, before the vote, um, from um, Bill Bowen, who's the law school's name for, and um, he just called up to say he thought it was a dandy article, which I thought was pretty politically interesting. So that's, that's the best I can tell you about that. So. That sounds, uh, sounds like we've pretty much much done it for the hard seats. Oh, yes. Do uh, moms and buyers still live in the area? Are they away? I, 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 I almost certain that both of that both of them live in Memphis now. But that's that's in the area. Definitely in the area. The woman who um, testified against Damien saying that she went on the satanic ritual with him and her son was on the recording, what happened to her? Okay, that, that's, a, that's another weird tangent that I haven't even mentioned, but there was a woman named Vicki Hutchinson who was uh, uh, working at a um, uh, little fast food gas station place and her employers were after her because some money was missing from the till, and she was facing charges because of that. She had a son who was the same age and had been a playmate with the victims. She went in and talked to a police officer and uh, said, my son may know something about this. And, oh, wait, I'm getting, I'm, I'm off on a, on a different weird tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Vicki Hutchinson. Vicki Hutchinson uh, decided that she was going to, she knew Damien and Jason just, just sort of barely, uh, and she was, there was some reward money involved in this, and, and uh, some people said that she had told them she was after it. But she um, went to the police and said, let me help you play detectives here, and because I, one night, Damien took me and Jesse to an ESBAT, E-S-B-A-T, which she said was a witch's orgy.
and they had gone out into the woods and um, uh, gotten, uh, and, and, and there had been people dancing around a bonfire, naked and painted and all of this and so forth. And so the police were very keen to, to uh, get her testimony and they used her in one of the trials. Um, since then, she has, she has very publicly said that that was all, all a lie. She said it to get out from under the, the hot check, the, the, the charges that she was facing. And the police promised her that she would. Um, but she's, she's, she's been interviewed for the Arkansas Times and said that, not by me, but by another reporter, and has done it. She's, she's written about it online. She's written to the guys in prison and apologized. Up here, she, they had a hearing on one of the Rule 37 uh, petitions, and she was there, and was the lawyers wanted to call her to say in court what she had said, and that it was not true. And the, uh, the judge ruled that told her that, you know, you change your story now, it's gonna, you're going to face a perjury charge, and she wasn't willing to go that far. So, so she, 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 she didn't testify. Okay. I thank you so much.